so we'll discuss in today's class the repulsion between a coil carrying ac current and a ac and a neighboring conductor so this is uh, you know you may be uh, familiar with the jumping ring experiments and the mathematical explanation of the phenomenon involved in jumping ring experiment is uh, demonstrating here so what is jumping ring experiments uh, if you are not uh, familiar with this i will briefly explain what is mean by jumping ring experiment so the apparatus of the jumping ring experiment consists of a cylindrical coil of apparatus consists of a cylindrical coil of wire wound around a laminated iron core so this is the laminated iron core and um coil of wire is wounded on this iron core and an ac is supplied between these terminals and this is a ring of aluminium which is slipped over the upper face of this iron core okay this is the uh, set uh, so aluminium ring is rest on the top if a strong alternating current is passed through the coil a strong magnetic flux which rapidly reverses the magnetization of the bar produced through the iron that means so this is the coil is of the form of solenoid uh, so an emf will be uh, developed in this uh, solenoid due to uh, self induction and which will opposes the actual applied emf mm. so uh, and Magnet, uh, and a la the large currents are thereby induced in the ring which is so uh, as self induced emf is induced in this coil and also a ring is placed joint to this setup so the solenoid setup so uh, due to a mutual inductance a um, emf is developed in this ring also uh, so uh, this will again opposes the <coughs> Uh, direction of the actual emf or the actual uh, magnetization so a large current uh, thereby induced in the ring which access a secondary of the step down transformer is formed so this will access a step up transformer uh, uh, a primary of the step up transformer and this will access a secondary of the transformer okay uh, so uh, the uh, the voltage so a strong alternating current uh, when a strong alternating current is passing through the coil strong magnetic flux which rapidly reverses the magnetization of the bar produ produced through the iron core which is due to the induction and a large current is produced in the ring which acts as secondary of the uh, step down transformer from where uh, primary being this coil okay the field set up by the induced current in the ring opposes the change which produces it that is due to the mutual induction and that's what i explained so a like so like poles are developed on the two faces on the two faces means on the lower face of the ring and the upper face of the uh, ring okay so uh, what will happen when like poles come together like poles when like poles come together this ring will uh, this ring will jump upward due to the repulsion between these two uh, this two coil uh, this acts as solenoid and this will produce uh, an emf which opposes the actual uh, magnetization Uh, due to the self inductance and which will impart an uh, emf in this ring due to uh, mutual inductance which will again opposes this so a like poles will be developed on the lower side and upper side of this and due to this like poles this will re repel and the ring will jump up this is the jumping ring experiment so the mathematical explanation of this phenomenon is given here suppose an ac which is equal to i uh, i 
and can be represented as zero sine omega t is passed through the coil of wire a. a here the wire this is the wire a and this ring is represented by ring is represented by b so we are passing in ac i is equal to i zero sine omega t through the coil a of wire a let the metallic ring b ring b have a self induction l and resisted sir so the metallic ring have a self induction l and resistance r and let m be the mutual induction between m and b so these are the terms involved here okay now uh, the em of in b b means the ring can be represented as minus mu into di by dt this is according to the mutual induction law so em of induced in the ring b can be represented as minus m into di by dt the minus sign appears here is because this is op which opposes the actual em of in the circuit so uh, minus m into d by dt of i is i zero sin omega t so if you are differentiating with respect to t we will get minus omega m i zero cos omega t now this cos omega t can be represented as minus o sin omega t minus pi by 2 uh, so this is nothing but omega into m i zero so the minus and minus cancel each other so it will be positive similarly uh, ac in uh, sorry this, therefore ac in b can be represented as m omega i zero by square root of r square plus l square uh, since this is em of e by r will give you the value of current so uh, this will this is the uh, value of emf and the re, uh, r is the total uh, reactance involved in the you know, total resistance which is a combination of purely ohmic resistance and the uh, ohmic reactance and this is r square plus omega square l square so this will give you the current in the ring b and phi is represented as tan inverse omega l by r which is the uh, 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 usual uh, phase in the, in the uh, combination of R and L circuit. Okay. Now the force F between A and B. So the two coils are the A, the coil A and the metallic ring B is there. So the force between these two uh, A and B can be uh, represented as uh, like this. That is the force is proportional to the product of currents in a and b which is according to the uh, faraday's law uh, we can represent the force between two current carrying coil as mu zero by four pi i one i two and uh, in double integration the vector r by r square dl one by dot dl two okay so this is the general expression for force between two current carrying loop according to this the force between Mm, uh, here we can see that the force is proportional to the product of the current and the two coil i1 and i2 uh, so the force between this a and b coil can be represented as here i am using the proportional this symbol proportional to the product of the currents in a and b so mm, uh, i0 sin omega is the current through a and this is the current through b which we have uh, just find out so this is proportional to the product of these two now we are uh, some ma some mathematical steps here so what we are doing is here m omega i zero square sin omega t uh, is here and we are expanding this term as sin a minus b so which is sin a cos b minus cos a sin b and the remaining terms are there and we are uh, here expanding the bracket uh, multiply sin omega t uh, inside and we will get this sin square omega t into sin omega t cos uh, pi by 2 plus uh, sin square omega t into cos pi by 2 plus 5 again the second term is sin omega t cos omega t uh, so which can be represented as sin by 2 sin 2 omega t that's what we have written here and the remaining terms are there. <coughs>
the mean value of phi zero square sine two omega t over a cycle is zero, and the mean value of phi square sine sine square omega t over a cycle is phi zero square two. So we already know this integration. If we are integrating this term, i square sine two omega, that is the second term over a complete cycle, the resultant will be zero. Similarly, if we are integrating sine square term over a complete cycle, the resultant will be one by two. So that will be uh, y zero square by two. So if we are applying these two terms here, we will get. Uh, so this term will vanish since this integration will give you zero. Uh, so the resultant will be half m omega i zero square cos phi by two plus phi by square root of since uh, sine square omega. Uh, by two now reduced to one by two, so we will get f s like this. Since phi is tan inverse omega l by r is less than phi by two, cos phi by two plus phi is negative. This means that the net effect over a cycle corresponding to the currents in A and B is in opposite directions, and the magnetic fields produced in A and B will also been or opposite direction so this is uh, uh, explicit from this expressions mm, that is the net effect over a complete uh, over a cycle corresponding to currents a and b is in opposite direction and the magnetic field produced in a and b will also be in opposite direction thus the coil a will therefore repel the ring b that's how the ring uh, repels from mm, a and jumping upward that is the principle and this is the mathematical explanation okay now we will discuss about ac bridge uh, you have already seen what are uh, what is wheatstone bridge in your high secondary classes you know and the condition of balancing etc so it shows slows and the Balancing condition for the general Wheatstone bridge arrangement were used in DC network of conductors. These laws are also applicable to AC networks, provided we consider the impedance set instead of resistance and inductance of the network. So the Wheatstone bridge uh, uh, laws or, or uh, the Kirchhoff's laws are applicable to AC circuits also. Uh, but the difference is that in the uh, DC circuits we are considering ohmic resistance, but in uh, AC circuits we are considering we are considering reactance or uh, in impedances. That's all. The balance condition for the bridge in case of AC circuit this can be represented as Z1 by Z2 is equal to Z3 by Z4. In the DC circuit, um, here it was a DC supply instead of AC supply and these are resist ohmic resistance R1, R2, R3 and R4 and the balancing condition there was R1 by R2 is equal to R3 by R4. In the AC circuit, it is Z1 by Z2 is equal to Z3 by Z4. For measuring complex impedances, uh, an AC source of audible frequency say 1000 cycles per second should be used. So for measuring this impedance we are using an AC source of uh, 1000 cycle per second. The driving voltage is usually provided by a small audio frequency oscillator a few volts being sufficient. Driving voltage is Driving with a few volt is sufficient for the circuit. It is preferable to use a far, as far as possible variable resistance and capacitors instead of variable inductors, inductance. So uh, instead of inductance, uh, the variable capacitors and resistance are suitable for the circuit. Also, to determine a complex impedance, both real and imaginary parts must be Measured. So, in order to get the impedance, and impedance may have both real and imaginary parts. We have so we have to find out both this real and imaginary parts separately. That is, the balance condition must be fulfilled some simultaneously. The detector for the balance 
condition is a pair of headphone giving minimum sound at balance so uh, in the dc circuits we were given with a bg here and at the balancing condition the bg will give you zero deflection in the ac circuits we are uh, connecting a headphone uh, at the center of this and at the balance the headphone will give you zero sound or a very low sound very low sound at the balance in all cases the resistance boxes used should be non inductive that's what we said before so lord rayleigh um, showed that ac bridges are most sensitive when the impedances are all equal and the sources source and the detector have the same same frequencies and lord rayleigh uh experimented on this and have shown that the impedances are very uh, ac bridges are very sensitive and when all these impedances are equal and the source and detector have detector have this is the source and this is the detector have same frequency okay so we will determine the self inductance by relay method now no uh, we will find out uh we will discuss how the inductance is measured using relay method <clears throat> so the circuit uh, for this is shown is like this the coil whose self inductance cell is to be measured and a standard low resistance r about 0.01 ohm are connected in the fourth arm of a wheatstone bridge here a self inductance who's a, a, a an inductance coil whose self inductance to be measured is connected in the fourth one this is one two three four this is the fourth arm and fourth arm of this wheatstone bridge in in series with a small resistance r which is of the order of 0.01 ohm and which is connected through a key k3 okay apply key k3 is connected across r so that it may be short circuited whenever we want p q and r are non inductive reactants these are non inductive reactants means is purely ohmic re uh, resistances in the circuit so um, we have to measure the value of this inductance so um, we can do it in steps in the first steps what we are doing is initially k3 is closed k3 uh, this is the key k3 remember this is closed kept closed the ohmic resistance s of the inductance coil alone is included in the fourth arm so ohmic resistance s of the inductance coil alone is included in the fourth arm p is made equal to q p and q made e p and q r set up as equal then r the resistance on the third arm is adjusted for no deflection in the bg by first pressing the battery key k1 k1 is this one and then galvanometer key k2 under this condition no current flows through the galvanometer so the first step what we are doing this only the inductive reactance of l uh, inductive reactance s of this coil l is included in the fourth arm and p and q made equal uh, this is kept closed these two key are kept closed and <clears throat> r is made such that the deflection in bg is zero which is the balancing condition okay this is the first step if now the galvanometer k2 key k2 is closed first and then the battery key k1 then the throw theta is observed in the galvanometer so <clears throat> if if you are closing this key uh, first we can observe a throw in the ballistic galvanometer uh, which is represented as theta1 okay this throw arises due to an extra emf l into di by dt induced in the coil while the current is growing uh, this is due to the inductance produced in the coil in the circuit 
if g is the galvanometer resistance then the current through it due to induced emf can be represented as <coughs> k into l by g into di by dt uh, here k is a constant k is a constant l is l by g uh, l into di by dt is the emf produced and uh, g is the resistance so e by r will give you the current i and k is constant so this is the current induced uh, due to the induced emf okay hence the total charge passing through the galvanometer uh, as the current in the coil grows from 0 to a steady maximum value i0 can be represented as q into integral 0 to i0 i i prime dt here this is the value of i prime which is the current produced due to this self induction so uh, if the current grows from i i to uh, 0 to i0 the total charge can be represented by integrating this current uh, integration of i dt will give you the charge from uh, where to where the current is uh, increasing this is increasing of 0 to maximum value i0 so we are sub substituting for i prime the expression is klg by di by dt um, so the integration part will give you the result i0 since this is di by dt into dt so this is purely di so the resultant will be result of integration will be i uh, integration limit applying 0 to i0 will give you i0 if theta will be the first throw of the galvanometer then q will q can be represented as k into theta into 1 plus lambda by 2 remember uh, the uh, bg theory the theory of bg which you have already studied uh, in the theory of ballistic galvanometer mm, go back to your previous classes for referring this so uh, q is now klg by kl by g i0 so this is this and right side is this and k is nothing but t by 2 pi into c by nba and the remaining terms appear so we are appearing an expression like this now to eliminate k and i0 from the above expression this is step 3 the key k3 k3 is the key uh, across the small resistance is open and the resistance r is included in the arm cd as r is small as r is small it does not affect the current i0 in the arm cd appreciably this is the arm cd this is the arm cd since r is very small which does not affect the uh, arm cd appreciably but it will introduce an additional emf r into i0 in the arm cd but an additional emf can be produced by this introduction of small r which is r into i0 this causes a steady current k r by g i0 uh, steady current so this is this, just as we find out the current k l by g into i0 this is the similar expression for the steady current in the circuit through the galvanometer the k is closed um, now k1 is closed K1 is the first key of the apply uh, the, of, of the source and then K2. K2 is the key across BG. The steady deflection phi on the galvanometer is snorted then. Okay. So we will get K R by G into I0 which is the steady current flowing through the galvanometer. This will be equal to uh, C by nba into phi uh, this is the k factor so c by nb and the current reduction is the current reduction factor of the galvanometer current reduction factor here dividing the previous equation by above equation if you are dividing this equation by this equation we will get l by r as t by 2 pi into theta 1 by phi into 1 plus lambda by 2 
so we are here this deflection in galvanometer is represented by phi the later the in the previous case we have represented it as theta 1 so, um, that's why the phi and theta 1 terms appear here if you are dividing these two equations we will get l as r into t by 2 pi p 1 by phi into 1 plus lambda by so we have eliminated the term k and i 0 in the equation and we have got a final expression for the inductance as L like this. So, um, this is how we are measuring the value of inductance using Rayleigh's method, using this bridge. Okay. Now, uh, we will discuss one more topic. Uh, that is the determination of self-inductance by Anderson's bridge method. So this is the Anderson bridge arrangement and the experiment is performed in two stages. Two stages, one is DC balance, first stage is DC balance and the second stage is AC balance. So the circuit is as in figure, this as in figure. The given coil of self-inductance L uh, and resistance as is connected in arm DC. Just as in the previous year, this is small resistance S and this is self-inductance L. And the ratio of P and Q is made when means P and Q made equal. The resistance R is uh, adjusted for balance of BG. The experiment is repeated making the P is to Q ratio to be 10 is to 1 and 100 is to 1. Uh, the accurate value of DC resistance of the coil is found by the Wheatstone bridge. Alright, so what we are doing is uh, we are making this ratio P by Q as 10 is to 1 and 100 is to 1 and repeating the experiments and from the balance condition uh, for Wheatstone bridge P by Q is equal to R by S we are finding out the value of S. Uh, which is R into Q by P. This is the value of small resistance. Now in the second stage, AC balance is done. So the circuit is as in figure. And the AC circuit, uh, an AC source is connected between A and C. This and this point. A variable non-inductive resistance R is connected in series with the cup capacitance and this combination is connected in parallel with the arm V. This is shown here. This is shown here. This is connected in series. A variable resistance and capacitance which is connected in parallel with the arm AB. A headphone H is connected between E and D. Between E and D. The resistance R is adjusted until minimum uh, Minimum sound is heard in the headphone, which is the balancing condition. The balancing condition is uh, recognized by mm, listening very low voice in the headphone. The value of the value of L is calculated using the formula L is equal to C into R Q plus R into capital R plus S. Uh, we will explain how this equation emerging out. This is the final formula of this is the final formula of calculating the value of inductance, and we will explain how this equation will arise. So this theory is let's say instantaneous currents in the different arms be as in shown figure. I have shown here. So this is the applied. Uh, AC voltage this is this is the current flowing in this direction here it is dividing into three I1 I2 this is I1 I2 and I3 and this uh, here so this I2 is flowing through this direction also and again this direction so this current through this um, will be combination of I1 plus plus I2. So this uh, current through this arm will be I1 plus I2. 
and here it is i3 this current is flowing through this arm this is i3 so current through this arm will be i1 plus i2 this and this i1 plus i2 plus i3 so these are the instantaneous values of current flowing through each arm at the time of balance that is no current when no current is flowing, uh, flowing through the headphone potential at e is equal to potential at d i potential at e means this point and this d means this one the potential at e will be equal to at that at d when the balancing condition is achieved applying kirchhoff's second law we can write for mesh a b e a a b e a means this mesh a b e a we can write uh, by applying kirchhoff's second law i1 p minus i1 p minus uh, the emf produced recurs this resistance which is i1 into the value of resistance i1 p minus i2 into r plus 1 by j uh, minus r i2 into r plus 1 by j minus which means uh, this is the mesh we are considering so we have considered this arm so which is the emf across this is i1 p and if you are taking this as complete loop and this is in opposite direction of i1 i2 is in opposite direction of i2 so that's why a minus sign appear in the equation and the combination of uh, reactants of c and the variable resistance r is appearing here which is represented by as r plus 1 by j omega this is the reactance across the capacitor so this is this i2 into r plus 1 by j omega c which is equal to 0 this is for mesh similarly we are finding we are applying this which shows second law to the mesh a e d a and b c d b uh, similarly for mesh a e d a a e d a is the mesh this so here i3 uh, r i3 r we can write it in either way uh, for first term as i3 r and then the second term as yes here here i have written in the uh, first order as in terms of i2 so i2 in this direction so what is what will happen i2 in j omega c i2 into j omega c and here i3 is in the opposite direction of if you are considering the is loop uh, i3 is in the opposite direction of i2 so i2 by j omega c minus i3 into r which is equal to 3 so or i3 as 1 by j omega c into r into i2 now for mesh BCDB, I are considering the mesh BCDB which is BCDB. If you are taking the current is in this direction, uh, but if you are taking these two arms, these two uh, currents I2 and I3 is in opposite direction of the combination of I1 plus I2. And the re resistance here is Q. So here the emf is i1 plus i2 into q and here it is a combination of this reactants uh, of l and um, the ohmic resistance s and this here a variable resistance so the equation will be i1 plus i2 into q minus i3 into s plus j omega l i3 into s plus j omega l is the emf across this arm and minus sign appearing here because this is now opposite to this current and also i2 r this is this value okay so these two directions are saying this is opposite to both these two so a minus sign appearing only in this step now what we are doing is rearranging the term here here i1 plus i1 into q and we are combining i2 terms together so uh, three terms in terms of i1 i2 and i3 so we will get an equation like this here 1 by j omega c and j omega l are the uh, impedances offered by capacitor c and and inductance l represent 
respectively. Omega is the angular frequency of applied AC. <laughs> Substituting the equation um, for I1 and I3 in the last equation. Also, we have got here an equation for I1 and an equation for I3 here. What we are doing is we are substituting this equation I1 and I3 in the last equation here. I1 and I3. So, we will get like this. Uh, you may just write down in your in a paper and uh, for this mathematical steps. So, we will get this equation. And what we are doing is we are rearranging the terms. Here, I2 is appearing in boom, three terms. So, we can cancel out uh, I2. So, the remaining terms will be like this. Equating the real and imaginary parts separately to zero. So, this is a combination of real and imaginary term appearing here and here. So, we can um, equate real and imaginary part separately to zero. So, uh, equating the real part, we will get q by p into r from the first term plus q plus r second term minus uh, here in the second term j and j will cancel so uh, l by c r which is equal to this is the real part this is the real part and for the imaginary part first term will be q by p omega c minus s by omega c r which is equal to 0 which implies p by q is equal to r by s this equation will give you and since omega c is common in both the terms so we can cancel each other so we can uh, obtain from this equation p by q is equal to r by s or s is equal to r into q by p this is the condition for dc balance which you have seen already here okay so this is how this equation obtained so we have obtained the balancing condition for dc now uh, from this equation from this equation what we will obtain here we can write l by cr as uh, taking this term right side of uh, right side of this equation so we can write this equation like this now from this um, L is equal to CR into uh, Q by P R plus Q, by Q plus R or L is equal to C into we can uh, take the R inside the bracket so this will be this. Now R Q by P is nothing but S according to the DC balance condition so we can write C into S into R plus R Q plus R. Here again R can be uh, R Q is first term plus R into S plus R. So this is the uh, equation of self inductance. So this is the equation we have got here. So this, from this final expression for uh, inductance we can calculate the value of inductance in the circuit. So this is the theory. Okay. So this is how we are measuring the value of inductance in a circuit using Anderson bridge method and Rayleigh method. Okay.